You're watching me on Living Eco. Hi, my name is Ken Spector with Living Eco, and we're here in sunny Hollywood, California at the Pickford Mansion at the Rock and Roll a Movie Awards Eco Lounge. And I'm here today with singer songwriter Natalie Gelman. Hey, Natalie. Hey. Nice Ken. to see you again. Nice to be here. Yes, yes. So, what brings you today to Debbie Durkin's wonderful event? I got to perform here today. I play guitar and sing and, and got to play for all the, the eco products out here and, and good good people enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> okay, very cool. Now, something that intrigued me about you the last time that we spoke was the fact that you had rollerbladed throughout the East Coast, okay. for, I mean, long distances. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I my first major tour, I actually decided to rollerblade from Miami to New York City um, and raise money for a charity and promote, you know, that. Well, these roads are all connected, but you don't need to use them in your car. You can use them on alternative means, and and so, yeah, it was it was just a whim of a tour that I was inspired to do. How many miles did you go, and how long did that take? It was 48 days. I got into New York City on my 21st birthday, and um, it was it was uh, about 1,500 miles. I don't know the exact mileage. We didn't have um, GPS out at the time that I did it. I was all going in on Google Earth going, I think the shoulder's wide enough, <laughs> okay, keep going. So yeah, I don't know the exact mileage, but about 1,500, because it was all side roads and side highways and stuff, so it wasn't as focally pointed. Very cool. Yeah. So you're about to put out your next album. You have one album out already, and yeah. then you're putting out your next album, what, next month? Yeah, it's coming out in just a month. Um, releasing the first single next week for Most of the While and the music video, and I'm really excited this record's sounds so good it's way better than the first one I made and the songs are great and um, got to perform them all today to a good response from the crowd and yeah so that's terrific that's ter um, you're going to be putting this out uh, you're self-publishing your album correct yeah. Yes. It's self-published right now. Um, I'm, I am signed to the same people who brought and discovered The Killers and Imagine Dragons and Neon Trees. And so there's a really great team behind it. But, you know, we're kind of in a, a funky flex in the music industry. And so people are doing things different and and taking taking it back into their own hands. And I'd love to have a label, but I'm not going to wait for one. So, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And how are people going to be able to buy your album or find your website? Mm -hmm. You can buy it at nataliegelman.com. Um, it's also going to be up on iTunes for pre-sale on April 16th. Mm -hmm. And um, all of those, it's going to be on Spotify, Amazon, all those websites. So widely available in spite yeah. of the fact that you're self-publishing, which is great. Exactly. It's great about music these days. You can sort of do it all yourself yeah. and distribute it yourself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and there are some music stores carrying it too in New York City and here in California. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I think it's good right now to start with little seeds out there and you never know where things are gonna are gonna grow sure, and sure. yeah. Who are some of your musical inspirations? I'm a huge Patty Griffin fan. Um, I'm also pretty inspired by Jewel and Sheryl Crow. Paula Nutuni is another favorite of mine. Um, a lot of singer-songwriters, a lot of my friends, I, I love their music and, and keep good company with, with other singer-songwriters, so I listen to their CDs in my car. Rebecca Lobby, Javier Colon, um, Tiff Jimber, um, a lot of local acts and, and just talented people that are unrecognized, but yeah. Of all of the songs that you've written, what would you say is the most memorable song you've ever written and the most sort of powerful song, or the one song that you think defines you? Um, it's hard because one doesn't quite feel all of those, but Laugh So Hard You Cry really is the most um, important song to me and is kind of the one that I live with and the, the vibe, it keeps teaching me stuff okay. as, I, as I live with it. Um, to always not take things too seriously and go with the flow. and, and um, So that one's really special to me. The one that probably most defines me is Street Lamp Musician, the title track. Um, and most of the while is really honest to the time I've spent on the road and, and doing what I do. So, oh, cool. yeah. Uh, do you support any charities? 
I do. Um, I love performing for charities and getting out there. I, I used to do a lot of work with a veterans charity. Um, I do a lot of events for Eco, um, for, for Earth Day and for Eco events. Um, and I do all kinds of things. My heart's really out there for children and for children who have problems with... Um, I'm, I'm kind of involved in a lot of different things. Okay. I've done events where I've raised money for children of incarcerated people. and. We were talking a little bit before about you just have to kind of get out there and be conscious. It's not even something that has to be so formal. You're volunteering and your stewardship of each other and of, of, you know, this land and of our community. But like just picking up trash and just giving a friend a hug or yeah. calling someone you don't know that well and then checking in with them if you saw they weren't doing so well, you know, that yeah. earlier that week. So I think everyone can, can do something to be a, a better steward of each other you know what I mean yeah, so I, yeah. I kind of especially now that I'm touring it's it's when events come up that I can perform at that I'm involved in and yeah I never thought of just giving a hug as something that's green and eco but it really is it's it a is. great gift and it's more meaningful than a lot of other tangible gifts that you could yeah. get and smiles yeah. and, and an ear and and just and some understanding you know mm -hmm. especially with I love totally love you know, social media, I get into it for a while, but then there's nothing as real as a conversation. And, and whether that's over a phone or in person, it's really important to reconnect in a real way with another human that's yeah. not like, yeah. I like this. Before we had talked about you being vegetarian or pseudo-vegetarian, you're a pescatarian. Yeah. Yes. What made you decide to be vegetarian? Have you been that way your entire life? or Haven't been that way my entire life. It's been, I think, Sometime in April here is the, the anniversary. It's either 10 or 11 years. I've lost track. Um, I could figure it out. But I was graduating from high school and, and just thinking, I was trying to get scholarships for college. And I, my sister was vegetarian, and I love her and admired her and was trying to do everything she did because she was my older sister. And um, reading all about it for a scholarship to write an essay about it. Mm -hmm. And I ended up writing this essay about... I became vegetarian. I don't think they believed me. Yeah. I got a rejection letter, okay. but um, it just made sense. All of the information I read about, you know, just how it impacts the environment and how we can make so much more protein, you know, feeding people with tofu and with different, different products than feeding people on meat. And then for me, the censure being in high school and a girl yeah. was all the hormones. Yes, yes. <laughs> and my thought was, I don't need any more hormones. I like so many guys. It was high school, you know, right, so I, was, right. I had no idea what kind of hormones it was, but it was kind of funny. And, um, but yeah, it was just, it made more sense. And it, it's um, just, it, for me, it really was the eco. It wasn't like I feel bad and I love animals, right. but it wasn't about, gosh, I feel bad for them. Or mm -hmm. it really was the eco thing of yeah. how much energy does it take to make this meat? Right. And I would just it just made sense it wasn't even like I was grossed out it was yeah. just like why are we doing this yes. so yeah energy and water and then there's the, also the cruelty factor and a lot of other things yeah. as well yeah now I mean and I, I that definitely plays a small part but for me it was like the yeah. energy and the water and we can feed so many more people yes. on a healthier diet too yeah. so yeah. yeah well that's great have you ever thought of going vegan I tried it um, I actually put it out there to my fans I'm trying to remember how long I've been vegetarian, but it was at the nine year anniversary, I asked them to go vegetarian for nine days uh -huh. and probably about two dozen people took me up on it, um, which was really cool. And then as I was coming closer to that, I said, wait, I'm going to try being vegan for nine days then. Okay. And I was, but it was also when I took a trip back to New York City. Okay. <laughs> and so I was at home and I was like, I have to go get my favorite ice cream, my favorite right. slice of pizza, my favorite burrito. And so at the last day, I kind of binged on my, my New York City food. But I did feel great. And I think I eat a lot less cheese than uh -huh. I normally do. But for me, I need, I know my body needs eggs and I crave that kind of stuff sometimes. Have you tried any of the vegan options? Actually, I just bought a few days ago yeah. something called The Veg, which is a vegan egg substitute. Oh, wow. And then there's uh, Daya cheese and there's a Go Veggie cheese and variety of vegan cheeses that are available. Yeah. And they're getting better and better as well as well as uh, ice cream or s tofu cream or soy yeah. cream or so delicious and so various exactly. others. Yes. I love, there's a couple of coconut ones and I can't remember the name of it, but there's some coconut ice creams that I really love. Mm. Um, and there's also um, 
I think I've just really cut back. I mean, if I do, I can't, you can't replace certain things. You yeah. know, you have your Ben and Jerry's favorite flavor that you're like, yeah. I can't let go of this cookie dough, yeah, <laughs> ironically. Yeah. But you know, okay. you replace certain things and you kind of just, for me too, it's more conscious of, well, how much butter is in this? And how yeah. is that, is that healthy? Can I right. replace it with more sweet potato and, right, right. and make some negotiations here with this recipe? And, mm -hmm. um, Cause it, yeah, I mean, and, and you have to be reasonable about it while being conscious about yes. it. Um, so for me, that's the health, the, the healthiest thing for my <laughs> well-being. Sure. Cause I can, I get so into stuff and can go a little too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's great that you're thinking about yeah. it, and it's great that we can talk about it. And maybe some people out there will be inspired to think about going yeah. vegan for nine days. Also, it's just a, you know, just try it. Yeah. You, and you can always even just try it for half the day. So I'm gonna try being see how much more vegetables I can get on my plate or can I do a whole meal that's vegetarian or mm -hmm. vegan sure, sure and it's easy yes. it really is yes. yeah and we have some great vegan options over here provided by Whole Foods Market today yes it's very nice so you, you live up in Ojai and you mentioned before that you were going to be gardening or starting to garden yeah, because you've been on tour for how long like yeah. months years how long have you been um, on tour for now I'm kind of perpetually on tour yeah. um no I, I've the past few weeks I've been touring I call it my three of the four corners of the country tour mm -hmm. um but I will be planting some vegetables, which is kind of nerve wracking for me. And I like harvested the seeds from old pumpkins and from peppers and stuff over the past year. And I know that my like window frame of, of time is closing in. So yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm excited, but I don't have very high expectations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's great that you garden. Do you have a space by your apartment? Or? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we have some green space. Um, my, my learner has some, some chickens and stuff. So he'll give me a little spot. I have to keep the ducks away from <laughs> Right. from the zucchini and the peppers and all else. Sure. I think they'll probably like the tomatoes, but sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. So what is the name of your album? It's called Street Lamp Musician. And um, how did you come up with that name? I grew up busking, actually, in the subways, street performing yes. in the subways. and um, uh, Of New York City? Of New York, yeah, yeah, of New York City. And I always just kind of, it was about, for me, it kind of became about people watching and kind of realizing how... Um, people interacted with the music and I interacted with them and our connection and and lack of connection sometimes that song's really about you know I'm singing my heart out here yeah. listen to me this yeah. is this isn't something you know not worthwhile so I really um that's what that one's about that's what I put my okay, cool. <laughs> two cents in on yeah cool, cool. well thank you so much Natalie I really appreciate it and uh, your album's coming out what what's the official date Officially May 14th. May 14th. Okay, but it's out in pre-sale in April. In pre April 16th, you said, right? Yep. Okay, cool. At iTunes and various other, at your own website, nataliegelman.com. Yep. It's cool. So, so this is Natalie Gelman. I'm Ken Spector with Living Eco. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.